I know there's still people coming in and it's uh, the way that it is, but uh, people are waiting on Facebook for us, so uh, we uh, want to be on time for them because I know some people tune in at, at the appointed time and if we're not on, they say, what's going on? Hey, where are you? You know, so we are here at Community Baptist and to tell people uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, I've really started at every place I go and every time I, I do something, I, I say Merry Christmas. Sometimes I get a smile and sometimes I get a questioning look like, isn't it a little early? But I don't think it's ever too early. So we, we are rejoicing in that. We welcome you this morning. And I trust that the Lord will bless you and just touch your heart and move forward with this wonderful season that we are in. Amen. Amen. And as usual, Edna's going to be playing a little song. You, if you guys came in early, you heard her playing some Christmas music and it was nice. But uh, we are just rejoicing in that. Turn your attention, turn your phones off and turn your attention uh, over to uh, receiving from the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Okay, so do that, uh, I would say ASAP, because 
we got to get those up and going. Um, Christmas Eve service will be at 6 o'clock in the evening. We used to have it late at night. That's getting a little bit difficult for some of our birthday of our king. Praise God. Um, let's see. I think that's it. Yep. Okay. Praise God. Uh, as my wife said, we took a special offering for person to person on uh, Thanksgiving Eve, and uh, I was not the one that was supposed to get the money over there. I thought that it would be handled, but when you get a whole bunch of pastors together, it's like they're all pointing the finger at who, well, you, uh, uh, who, who's going to take care of it. Well, we had our, our pastors meeting on, on Friday, and they brought in the money uh, that was supposed to be taken over to person to person. And uh, I wasn't supposed to be the one that's going to take it. In fact, one of the other pastors, okay, I'll take it down. And by the end of the meeting, he says, oh, I'm so busy right now. I don't know what I, if I'll be able to get it in until maybe next week sometime. I said, I'll do it. <laughs> so I was the one that took it down. And they thought that, it, you know, I, I'm there each month. And, I'm, I'm, you know, they know me. And I said, now I want you to tell you, this is not from this community Baptist. This is from the, the churches of Norwalk. I said, you know, we are uh, a, a fellowship of Christian churches in Norwalk, and we, we want to, it was $613 that uh, we brought, plus some canned food that we'll eventually get down there. But uh, it was just kind of stimulated and, and everything by our Thanksgiving Eve service. So I just want to let you know that you were a part of that. We continue to give. Uh, they were tremendously blessed uh, when I brought down that money. And uh, it's a lot of people in need, and they are seeing uh, more and more people still coming out, especially with the colder weather coming. So uh, continue to give. Uh, we will be taking it down probably uh, a little earlier. You know, we're probably going to take it down before Christmas. So if you bring in some food, uh, just drop it in the back, and I'll, I'll make sure I take it down. But we're going to try to do that before Christmas. And if you put any uh, money in the offering, just mark it person to person. And uh, we want to be a blessing to them uh, before Christmas. So believe it or not, it's coming quickly. Christmas is on the way. Amen. So praise God. Amen. Praise God. So let's sing our first hymn. So open up your hymn books. 187. Let's stand together. chance to hold this one a little while ago it was a wondrous thing. oh 
Look at that outfit. Hallelujah. I know there's one specifically. I don't know if you heard what she said. Janet, who we've been praying for, who had the tumor behind her, her face that was affecting her eye and uh, all those things and going to be pressure and all those other things and was going to have to be some major surgery and a plastic surgeon and an eye surgeon and a brain surgeon and all these other things, had gotten some chemo and all these other things. But when they went in to look at it again, the tumor is gone. Amen. Answer to prayer. Amen. Now they're still going to go in and check and see if, you know, the little margins and everything, if there's anything in there. But, uh, you know, our God is able. Amen. Amen. What a great testimony of what God is doing. Amen. Anybody else have a testimony? Now, oh, come on, Annette. You got to give a testimony of us getting down there and back. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So God was merciful to us again and being able to see our our grandkids and praise God. Talking about birthdays, that's a that's a wonderful thing. And we have a, another grandchild uh, coming uh, after Christmas. So praise God. We're praying for that, but uh, that's a blessing in itself. But uh, any other testimonies? Anybody? Yes? No? Rick? I just want to share a quick thought. I heard this morning, you know, when we think about Christmas, a lot of people think it's a myth. I know once upon a time, this is not once upon a time. And he pointed out how specific Luke is in pointing out. You know, he said, in as much as undertaking to compile and account of things, just as they were handed down to us by those who were eyewitnesses. This is not once upon a time. This is eyewitness. Amen. Luke is saying, author in Tiberius Caesar. Very specific. When Pontius Pilate Pond died. Amen. And it was so wonderful to think, you know, that Christmas is not a myth. It's the specific historically proven Something happened, and it was the coming of the Son of God. Amen. 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 Awesome. Prayer concerns this morning. We have some uh, people who have lost loved ones, and uh, we're praying for those families home from uh, school for vacation and things like that, getting ready for that. Uh, praying for them. You know, it's gotten to the point where it's kind of funny. You know, when my kids, I don't know, when they, when they leave, we'll show no, no, let us know when you're on the way. Let us know when you get home. Well, we were just down visiting my son. 
says, now dad, you, when you guys get home, you make sure you text us and tell us that you guys, really? Praise God. But concerned about Jack traveling in these days, so we will be praying for safe journey mercies for all those who will be on the highways and the byways in the coming, coming weeks. Amen. Any other prayer concerns this morning? Okay. Okay, your sister and sister in law. Amen. Yeah, that's my sister in law. Amen. Yes. Uh, Lynn? Lynn. She's not with us today, but she is healing after she had a car accident. So uh, continue to keep her in prayer. Rick, we're going to continue to keep you in prayer. Go ahead. Thank you. I just want to say very, very briefly. Uh, you know, I've been sharing with you as my church family my situation, and it continues. I don't know how specific that was, but the tumor that they did find on my adrenaline gland was on the left adrenaline gland. But the test that I took up at Yale said the left adrenaline gland is not overactive. It is his right adrenaline gland that's causing the problem. And then all of a sudden, well, can we just remove the right adrenaline gland? Well, what's causing the problem in order to take a CAT scan? On the right of the land to see if it has a two. Please keep this in prayer. Amen. Please. So we're still praying for Janet. Janet, Janet, Tammy, loving Janet, her brother Bill, and her niece. Amen. 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 And your niece. Okay. Yes. Uh, jobs. James Moffat. Did you already say that? I did not. Okay. Um, then a little baby that I've actually been following on Instagram. She's a little bit over a year and she's had a bone marrow transplant and she's, you know, been up and down with the healing process. Her name is Avery. I'm going to pray for her. And then the Carter family, which is, you know, Nicole and Greg, up in Maine. Anything else? Yes. Oh, yes. Norwalk High School had a lockdown. Somebody called in a, um, they said there was a, a, a gun present outside and they were going to shoot up the school. And, uh, believe it or not, that happened in three other schools around the state. Uh, so we'll pray for the people who are involved in that. It seems like it's not just one. There's been fights and, and things. There were uh, drug overdoses in two schools, at least, uh, here in Connecticut. Uh, just on Friday, uh, overdoses at school. So uh, pray for our schools in general and our teachers and our students. Amen. Amen. It's a, a scary time in these days. Amen. Yes. What? I'm sorry. Yeah, I can't hear you. He's going into his last basketball season. All right. Going into his last basketball season? Amen. Praying for focus. I pray that it's not the last basketball season for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Strength and healing? Yes. Butch? Okay. All right. Yes. May God would heal James eczema. My grandson. A lot of problems with skin and rashes and actually being very painful.
Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for healing, for skin rashes, for diseases, for cancers, for this little one-year-old who needs a healing touch that's gone through the bone marrow transplant at such a young age. But Lord God, we know that you are a God who heals and answers prayer. As you've touched Janet, we pray that you continue to touch her and there would be no trace of any cancer in that body. Lord God, we pray that you continue to touch our, the other Janet, Lord God, and Pammy and Bill and uh, this niece, Lord God, that needs a touch of healing for Billy, for Rick, for Lynn, Lord, for our sister and sister-in-law, for Mike Horvath, for Kathy, Lord God, Lord God, for so many who are in need of a healing in their mind and body and soul and spirit, but especially we see the outward part, the, the bodies that need to be touched and healed. And we know, Lord God, that you are a God who hears and answers prayers. We pray for those who are in need of jobs during this situation of uh, so many things going on in the world. We pray that you would continue to be Jehovah Jireh, our purpose through surgeries, through problems with, with health issues, through the students that were killed in the shooting at the uh, high school. Lord God, with those police officers who have been killed in the line of duty, with so many that are in uh, this dark and uh, dangerous world, Lord God, that are killed uh, at random and things like that. But Lord God, we pray that we would give you the praise and the honor, that you would touch those families that have lost loved ones, continue to direct them to you, that your spirit would lift them up, Lord God, and that their, their hope is in you, Lord, not in anything else, Lord God, but you would be able to bring them through each and every situation. We pray for our dear brother James Moffat, Lord God, as he's uh, going in for more tests, Lord God, and we pray for strength and healing to his body, Lord God, that he would continue to be able to minister the word for you, Lord God, as he continues to serve you, Lord God. Strengthen him, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We pray, Lord, for all the schools, Lord. We thank you that you are there. We pray that we would be able to lift you up and give you praise. And that, Lord God, through it all, we would see that there would be your hand upon them, Lord God. We pray for protection. We pray for uh, a new basketball season that's coming up, Lord God. That you would continue to receive honor and glory through it, Lord God. That you touch my little brother here, Lord God, and just continue to bless him and strengthen him. And reveal the path that you have called him to go on, Lord God. And if this is be part of that, Lord God, that you would just give him the strength, the wisdom, and the skills, Lord God, to move forward. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. And that each one of us have so many things to, to give unto you, Lord, the gifts that you have given to us. Let us use the gifts that you have given to us to bless others, especially during this Christmas season, Lord God. Help us to remember your blessings and pass them along as we see people around us that are in need. We pray, Lord God, that you would continue to strengthen and guide and keep us in the center of your will. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Chris, you want to do the church covenant? As we have the first Sunday of the month. Sunday, we read the church covenant, which we will find on the inside of the back cover of the hymn. The first and last paragraphs will be read together, the center paragraphs will be read responsibly. Can you stand with me, please? Have the Son and the Holy Spirit, we do now solemnly and joyfully affirm our covenant with God and with each other. We pledge to serve Christ in the fellowship of this congregation. 
we shall endeavor to love one another, to remember one another in prayer, to share in each other's joys, and to sustain each other in times of distress. We aspire to be a fellowship of the concerned, where the lost may find Jesus Christ, sinners may find pardon, seekers may find meaning for their lives, and where all who come may find welcome. We shall strive to be responsible church members through faithful attendance, study, and giving. We shall be in better bodies and temples of the Holy Spirit. We shall endeavor to avoid experiences and habits that defile the body and hinder our witness. Believing that our call to membership in the church is a call to witness in the world. We dedicate ourselves anew as servants of the Lord of all life. As we pledge our support to the work of our missionaries throughout the world, we commit ourselves to the mission to which God calls us. Acknowledging our human frailties and ever seeking forgiveness and uplifting, we profess our need of the Holy Spirit and commit our lives to Jesus Christ and through Him to the care, the judgment, and deliverance, and the mercy of Almighty God. Amen. I asked my wife to sing a song this morning for our special music. ship of your life is tossing on the sea of strife, you need someone. If it feels life is all alone and your house is not a home, you call those lonely days and nights when things just won't turn out right and you want someone to care and someone to just be there you need someone I give you Jesus he's the peace that passes all understanding I give you Jesus He's the perfect love that cast it down all fear. I give you Jesus. He's the water that you'll drink and never thirst again. I give you Jesus, my friend. all around keep your spirits to the ground you need someone if your body is in pain and your health you can't regain you need someone if at times that you have tried with all baby Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, we don't need to focus on the baby Jesus. Only that he came and that it was a part of the plan 
I was looking at some of the scriptures and that he was prophesied to have come in the Old Testament, and he met all of the criteria to be the Messiah, to where he was born and when he was born, born of a virgin, announced by the angels, all of the different things that we see are miraculous. And yet the world focuses on baby Jesus. There was a, uh, a movie, I think it was called Talladega Nights, about a Ricky Bobby, a car driver and this and that. And one of the scenes that he's there, he's, he's with the family and stuff like that. And he uh, starts praying. And he prays, dear baby Jesus. And he starts, and the family said, wait a minute, why, why are you praying, dear baby Jesus? I love the Jesus who came and was the teacher. I love especially the one who was making intercession for me. When I pray to Jesus for healing, for strength, for provision, I pray for the one who is eternal, who is there from creation with God. Let us, it says in the, in the, in the Bible, let us make man in our own image. You see, he was there. He was the creator. You see, we see the whole thing with where Jesus came from. And if we take a look at a few things today, I'm going to move around some of the scriptures. But in John's gospel, starting with 1-1 one, one in John. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And we need to know that as we look at Advent, something's coming. Well, that's what it was in the Old Testament. That's what we remember now, that the promises of God were fulfilled. I don't know about you, but like, whoo! They were all promised and they were fulfilled. But you know, we need to look ahead that he's coming back. And we believe as all those who have believed in the centuries that have gone by, seems, you know, I, I use centuries and a little bit of time. Do you know that they expected him to come back at any moment? You know, he might come back. We need to know that this is what we're looking at, the coming of the day of the Lord. He was from the beginning and he will be till the end. You know, for me, when I, I think of things, I think of it as, as songs. And when that, that verse is, is read, I think of the song. And uh, I'm not in a great voice, but every mountain valley shall be filled. Every valley shall be filled. Every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough way shall be made smooth. Now, you know, I don't know about you, but it's kind of really cool and this and that, but think about it. Construction needed to be done. A bulldozer, a land mover had to come in to take down the mountains, to fill up the valleys, to smooth the highways. I don't know what highways they're talking. The highways will be made smooth. Have you been on the highways just lately? So many potholes already and bumps. They tear up the road and they put in a patch and a bump put a bump. I mean, you know. But here it is, the scripture smooth and a highway and to have it. Then when Jesus came in, he came in riding on a donkey and laying it down. Hosanna, blessed the negative parts. I don't like to hear the tough parts. God, they didn't go. That's been wonderful. But the love that he showed was he went to the cross. 
He went all the way to the cross for them. We need to be going to do. Are we so ready to forgive those people around us? Those who are still maybe going to die in their sin. Anything that goes on. But we need to be forgiving. We need to be able to be like him. Love one another as I have loved you. We have a goal that we have to match. We're supposed to love like Jesus. We are to reflect like Jesus. My friend James Moffat tells me all the time, has anybody told you today that Jesus loves you? He tells me that, he tells friends that, he tells anybody who will listen that. Do we tell the world that Jesus loves them? In fact, last night I was talking to him on the phone and he's having medical issues and things like that. That's why we're praying for him. And then he says, oh, and tell your wife that Jesus loves her even more than you. <laughs> I said, thanks, James. You see, we need to know and we need to focus our attention that Jesus does love us. And if he was created by him, he loved us so much. Now, I don't know about you, but have you ever taken a nail and you start to nail it and all of a sudden you hit the wrong nail? Yeah. You know, if you know Revelation backwards to find it, but 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Yeah. Escapes them, their notice. That by the word of God, heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of the water and by the water. And through which the word for fire kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of the ungodly. Now we don't want to usually hear these things. It says all of these different facts that people start to mock about. Oh yeah, he's coming, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. People have been saying that forever. But he's coming. And we need to look at the fact that the world will be dis, uh, destroyed by fire. The judgment comes, but is patient towards you. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Patient. You know, there are times when I'm doing things that I get impatient. I get impatient with, you know, maybe somebody at a store. Definitely impatient with people on the highways and byways. I sometimes get impatient with my wife, my kids, my grandkids. You know, we, I get impatient with a lot of things. Do you ever get impatient? Let's be honest here. Do you ever get impatient? The answer is yeah, we do. But it's saying here, do not become impatient. The Lord is not slow about his promises. Don't count him as slow, but he's patient toward them to repentance. How many does he want to come to repentance? He wants everyone to come to repentance. Uh, take me now before I slip back. You know, bless me. Now. He's not willing that any should perish. Are we being selfish that we, we call on the Lord to come? Do we want to call down fire upon their heads? We want to, you know. The Bible says that we've been taught to pray for those who de We have a hard enough time sometimes doing nice things for nice people. You know, one of the greatest things I remember during my time in teaching was during Christmas, we would do a thing called Secret Santa, you know? And then I came up with an idea myself that I was going to be secret, secret Santa. I started doing things like sticking Christmas candy in people's mailboxes. Why? Just to kind of freak them out. Oh, did you do that? No. Who did that? No, don't know. I started putting cards and stuff in people's boxes and looking for different opportunities that people needed something to run off or something. I just kind of, without letting them know. You know whole, the whole trick that I was trying to do was don't let them know. 
Do we do things to try to help people out without getting any, <clears throat> well, you owe me one. Really? Maybe we shouldn't be doing it that way. Maybe we should just be looking that God is waiting and hearing these things. And he wants people to be able to have time to repent. Do you help people to know that Jesus loves them? Do you help them to know that there is an answer? Do you have an opportunity to tell people that the whole reason he came was that we might all get something? You know, no. You can't buy your salvation. You can't get it and earn it. Well, maybe if I, I put a roof on the church, maybe if I, I sing in the choir, maybe if I do these different things, that maybe that patient a thousand years as, as a day, what's that mean? You know, I don't know. You look at the Old Testament, they waited a long time for Messiah to come. They waited a long time for Jesus to come. And even when he came, there were those who didn't accept the fact that he'd even come. They were saying, why did he come now? Really? You know, we need to know that this is what we have to see. These are the things that we need to do. That he's giving us an opportunity. And if we have repented, if we have been saved... We should be sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, and be used by God to tell other people about what Jesus wants. And let them have the opportunity. There's still time. There's and you're running out of time? A whole different mindset. That we could have victory if we continue to have a little bit more time. But can you imagine if you're playing until this team gets ahead? That's not fair. Don't do it. What a gift, what a wondrous gift. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Separation between the sheep and the goats. That Jesus has given us that view in Matthew that says that in, in that time there will be a, those who have bended a knee to him and those who have not And there will be a separating and there will be a judgment. But thank God that judgment has not occurred yet and there is still time. I want you to take a look at what it says in verse 8. But do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that the Lord's, uh, Lord's one day is as a thousand years, a thousand years is as a day. Verse 9. The Lord is not slow in his promises, as some count slowness, but is patient. And he is wishing that all should come to repentance. All. That is the hope that we have. In verse 17, it goes on to say, You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on guard so that you are not carried away with the error of the people who are unscrupulous and lose the firm commitment. But grow in grace. Now, I want you to maybe underline it in your Bible here. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. The little kid was laying there on the floor shaking his head. The mother said, what happened, Johnny? into our relationship with God we are saved and everything else but it says grow in grace and in the knowledge or do we get fallen asleep too close to where we got into our relationship we don't want to fall out we want to be getting closer and closer and closer to God we go through life that we are pointing others to him oh, glory are we the hope of the fact that saved that we're sanctified set apart for serving God that we allow the Holy Spirit to speak through us and use us and guide us and direct us to empower us to serve a higher purpose you see because there is a higher purpose you know don't mark a well I got a new suit and I'm doing this and I'm all really over into 1st John 5 and this is the message that we have heard from him and we announce to you. This is the message that I've heard from so many times that I've heard from Jesus. 
and that you better look and see that you've heard from him and that we acknowledge and, and announce and proclaim and tell other people. Are we ready to tell other people that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all? Are we ready to let people into the light? Are we ready to share that light that God has in our lives? Or do we just light one little candle and then kind of hide it under a bushel? You know that, that song, this little light of mine. Are you letting the light of God shine? It says here that the light of God and be walking and stumbling around in the dark because the two go together. When we were with Jesus, there's light. Last night, my wife and I were walking down the driveway of my daughter's house and she goes, be careful, there's kind of some ruts and holes in this driveway. And I got out my phone and it has a little app that has a flashlight. And I turned on the flashlight and I turned it up to bright and I kind of held it up like this and I was behind her. She goes, oh, I can see a lot better now. I don't wonder. And then she finally looked around and saw that I was holding up a flashlight. You see, if we walk together, and there is a light, it shines to our pathway. If you're walking with Jesus, he is the light. He is the way, the truth, and the light. He is also the light of the world that shines into the darkest places. There is nothing too dark that the light of the Lord will not shine and illuminate our way and help us to have a lamp unto our feet. That's what it says in Proverbs. So we won't stumble and fall. If we're walking with Jesus, you're walking in the light. You don't even have to carry a flashlight. I can put that away. I'm walking with Jesus. He is the light. He is the light of the world. And it says that right here. If we say that we're walking with Jesus, we're not going to be in darkness. We will not be in darkness. We have fellowship. To forgive us from all. Underline that word, all. Unrighteousness. But I say to you, we need to say that we are forgiven by the blood of the Lamb. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Let's close our hearts right now in our Bibles and turn to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your plan of salvation. We thank you, Lord God, that you are waiting on those people who need to come to repentance. And there's no penitence that we can do. There's not works that we can do. But Lord God, as we so shine, that we, we continue to walk with you, that we can walk in newness of faith, that we can walk in the cleansing of your blood upon our lives, that our sins would be forgiven if we could repent. You are faithful and just to forgive us from all unrighteousness. Lord God, we sometimes put judgment on other people, but Lord God, we thank you that you've given everyone an opportunity to go to you. The best of us, the worst of us. Lord God, we think about some people who have done some horrible things and that they don't have the right to do this or that, but Lord God, we thank you. If we confess our faults, confess our sin, you are faithful and just. You make us clean again. We're washed in the blood of the Lamb. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God. As we prepare ourselves for this communion time, Lord God, help us to confess our sins. Those things that we have done that we shouldn't have done, those things that we didn't do that we should have done. Those things that we have not given our attention and time to you nearly enough. Lord God, we know that you're there to speak to and to be in fellowship with us. Forgive us from ignoring you and help us, Lord God, to sense your presence to sense your cleaning of our spirits, that you have forgiven us and made us every bit whole. We thank you, Lord God.
Now what it says in Corinthians, it says that, for I received from the Lord that which was delivered unto me, that the Lord on the night that he was about to be betrayed took bread, and he gave thanks and he broke it. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup and after giving thanks, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you until he comes. Lord, we thank you that you are coming back. And we do this in remembrance of what you did for us. And we will do it in remembrance until you return. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Open up your hymnals. We're going to sing as we usually do the couple verses of Amazing. Amazing grace, how once was lost, but now the emblem of your broken body. sacrificed as he came up to John the Baptist and they saw him coming John called him the Lamb of God behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world his disciples didn't understand what that truly meant but he became the sacrificial lamb and he told them all he told us all drink of this cup this promise, this covenant between God and man for the remission of sin. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you did. And we receive this in your mighty name. Receive the cup. Let's stand together and sing the last verse. Understanding that you have forgiven us, that we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, that we are forgiven, and that, Lord God, you want our light to shine, that we should proclaim your coming again and being ready, that we are of our faith to be able to be able to receive you when you come. And, Lord God, through it all, in spite of all of the things that are coming this day in all of those things that people persecute us and do these things lord god we will love those who persecute us and pray for them and that we will lord